wildly underestimated how difficult running a marathon is. I mean, you know, you knew, dude, that this was gonna be stupid. I, at this moment, I cannot fathom how I'll finish this. I don't know why, but walking backwards down the stairs is kind of the only way that I can go down the stairs. Okay, want to uh, tell you the story here of the time I did an off the couch Ironman. Um, I'm not as sore as I thought I would be. My hip flexors, like, you know the V to the D that the guys get for whatever reason, that is unbelievably sore. Like my lower abs are really sore. My shoulders, like the front delts are super sore, sore, sore. But so like, how did all this come about? How did I go and do an off the couch Ironman, which an off the couch Ironman is doing an Ironman with no training at all. This is, I haven't swam in a year. I haven't ran in two years. To give you some sort of context, the total amount of run and swim that I have ever had is in 2016 I did a sprint distance triathlon, swam whatever it was, 600 meters, and uh, and ran three miles. One year later, with no run or swim training, I did an Olympic distance, so just under a mile of swimming, six miles of running. That was 2017. One year later, no training. Uh, in 2018, I did again another Olympic distance, swimming just under one mile, running. Uh, six. 2019, nothing. I, I, I ran zero bit, but I did do a swim challenge where I swam every day for 30 days. That was a huge help uh, during this whole thing. But come 2020, I have, I have ran a total of 15 miles, total of 15 miles in my lifetime. But so why? Why an off the couch Ironman? Well, I was uh, on Facebook. I saw this guy, Blake Anton. He did one and I was like, well, he's a really good cyclist and this looks like fun. I don't want to do it in Everest. Everyone's all about the Everesting right now. I don't want to do that. So let's not do it Everest. Let's do a sweet challenge. And this off the couch Ironman, well, that seems like a good idea. I look as cool as you could look. So um, we I wanted to start at 6 a.m. sharp. It's just not gonna happen. So it's 6.32, so I think like official start time would be 6.35. Uh, Blake Anton, the guy who I saw do this, he did this um, in I think 13 hours, nine minutes. Again, not we're not racing. From transition to transition, I'm gonna hang out. I'm gonna eat some food, I'm gonna stretch. You know what I mean? Just about finishing. The lake is super calm. It's actually a really nice day. It's uh, not hot at all. Six laps, let's, uh, let's do it.
this like coming to shore if I'm gonna get shit for coming here and kind of taking these little mini breaks but whatever I was so confident going into the third lap and then uh, I don't really want to do this anymore <laughs> we're just gonna take it one piece at a time so we're halfway through the swim my shoulder my left shoulders not feeling super great and I gotta I don't want to get injured so I gotta be real careful you know what I mean um, this suits a little tight all good vegan excuses let's go we're halfway halfway So look, obviously this is not an official Ironman, and so the distances, bro, in the in the water, distances are so weird. And so I had this watch, when I swam 30 days, I swam every day for 30 days, and I got this watch about halfway through. And in the story I was saying, like, all of a sudden I was like, bro, I'm a dolphin, I'm just flying. But that watch, even though it was set to open water and elevation, it was, it, it was so wildly inaccurate it said I was like going so fast and, and miscalculated the distance. And so then what I would do is I, to compare it, I used my phone and the watch in my little buoy at the same time. And like the watch was like double the speed. So I used my phone, set it to swim, open water swimming on Strava. And uh, it says I did 2.4 miles. I'm sure that someone's going to look it up and be like, dude, you did 0 0.01 less whatever we swam for an hour and 45 minutes Strava says I did 2.4 I'm taking it I'm taking it dude uh, boy the first two laps I was like this will never end and then I really found my stride I actually like really got comfortable swimming like I dude I could do this again I wouldn't want to but I could Okay, so now we're gonna start the bike leg, uh, 112 miles. We actually descend quite a bit for a little while, um, and then we're gonna do some laps on the flat section, and then we climb back up. So the, the last 20 miles, uh, 30 miles, something like that, we're gonna climb 4,000 feet, right? So it's gonna be pretty steep at the end. All right, let's go, let's ride. just done a four hour TT uh, so I was very comfortable with the fit of the bike we were just railing everything was good everything was great I get down to the flat section and Chaz and Nick uh, my teammates 
they were doing a little loop that day and they came out and they rode with me for a little bit. Chaz was like, you know, what's the etiquette on us like pace lining? And I was like, dude, I'm gonna get too much shit for it. If I, if I, even if I just ride next to you, there's gonna be die hard Iron Man. They're gonna be like, he never completed an Iron Man. And so I was like, I can't, you know, we can ride next to each other and, and that sort of stuff. But they're, they're like on form right now and they're not doing an Iron Man. So they're riding pretty hard. You know, I was keeping my power between 200 to 220, just riding next to those guys. Like, dude, Chaz will ride at 280 watts and have a conversation all day long. So it was a little bit difficult, and the wind picked up big time. Going out, you're like 20 miles an hour, 300 watts. Then you turn around, and you're doing zero watts and 30 miles an hour. But we were able to bang out some serious mileage uh, very quickly on the flat section there. so far has been really easy because for the first 20 miles you're kind of gravity assisted and then the flat but the, the wind was so bad it was like such a crosswind and so you couldn't really be in the TT position uh, but then on the way back you're doing like 30 miles an hour at 90 watts it was gnarly this has been a roller coaster of emotions as any I mean I, I don't know if you would call this ultra endurance it's pretty, I mean, any, I think anything 10 hours plus is pretty ultra. But anyway, there's always these like peaks and valleys that you have to get over and you just chunk it up. So during the swim, you know, you have this moment where you're like, no way I'm going to finish swimming. And then, then you get over that hump and you get real like encouraged. You're like, oh dude, I'm crushing. And uh, I, so I just been going through that roller coaster. I felt so good. I was actually, I was like, dude, I'm gonna get a KOM during this. That's how good I was feeling until I got down here and then, and then my boy Chaz and, and Nick came and they, uh, they were riding with me, but you know, they're riding kind of hard. <laughs> and I'm trying to like, it's cause it's so weird. I'm doing like 220 watts, 200 watts, which obviously across 12 hours, 14 hours, you know, is a lot. Uh, but given when you're just riding with your boys, you know, that's not, that's not much, but so anyway, right now I feel like I, there's a 70% chance I'm going to finish, but after the, the bunch of climbing we have, that's going to, that's going to have to take a steep decline riding 26 miles after swimming and riding. It would be difficult, let alone running. So now we're gonna hit the climb and, and that's gonna be, cause I think there's 5,000 feet of climbing, 6,000 feet of climbing on this course and we've done less than a thousand. So we've got about 4,000 feet of climbing now to get back up to Bass Lake. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> Stopped, I had like kind of refueled before the climb and said goodbye to my, my teammates, Chaz and Nick, and we started heading up, back up the hill to embark upon the run. My driveway 
is so steep. It's like 30% uh, getting up into the driveway. Uh, I clicked off 113 point something miles. So just over the 112. Feeling great because I am not racing. I, I mean, I'm not burning any matches. I am keeping it just so low. I mean, my energy output is like, it's laughable, right? Like I am not going hard at all because I just don't know what the run is going to be like. So I'm saving all my energy. So even though I ran, I swam 2.4 miles and then I rode 113, that, I mean, that's a big day. But for whatever reason, because I just kept my reserves and I was just riding like zone one, zone two the whole time, I felt fine. We got to keep this, this uh, fire burning. Like I've said, said before, it's so weird. If you put like on the time scale of 14 hours, right? We've got another four to five hours to go. And so you just don't think about it in like, I don't know, my body's just ready to go. Now, if I wasn't gonna do a marathon, I'd be passed out right now. I'd be on the couch. I couldn't even, I wouldn't be able to get up. It's so weird how your body like reserves energy until you're, I don't know how to phrase it. I'm a little brain dead. I am smoked for sure, but uh, we're gonna run this marathon. It's a lot of elevation on, on this marathon though. So I don't know. I don't know what a fast marathon is. If I run 10 minute miles, I, you know what I mean? What's that, that puts us at four hours, right? Something like that. I don't know what the math is. Or do it, do it, run. That way. And the worst part has begun. I was feeling really confident until the very second I started running. Running is so stupid. One mile, one stinking mile, dude. How many miles do I have to run? 26 miles? Ah! After what has felt like an eternity, we've ran two freaking miles. I hate running. Three miles. Four miles. Mile five. Mile five is still so stupid. Why is it a 26.2? Why the point two? Why the 26? Who came up with these numbers? Terrible numbers. So, we are now, we have now encharted upon, what am I even saying? We are in uncharted territory because we've never ran seven miles before. And we have so many more miles to go. <laughs> With every freaking stride, I'm setting a new PR. So that's kind of cool, yeah? But unfortunately, I'm never gonna run again because running is terrible. I wanna run faster. I have energy, very little energy, but I want to run faster. I just, I literally don't know how to make my legs move. It would be like if you were riding a bike and you didn't know how to shift. And you're just like, bro, how does everyone ride fast? I'm stuck in my 11, my 5411. Everyone's flying up these climbs. You're like, well, dude, you're in the wrong gear. Shift. Like, I can't shift. Shift, bro. I want to look at the mileage so bad. But it's just like, it cracks me. I mean, I'll be dead honest, dude. Like, cars have gotten close to me, and I just hope they hit me. I'm just like, dude, if this car runs me over, then I can stop. This is difficult. But I could see the time and we're about three hours 
right as we hit the halfway point, which is uncharted territory for me. I have no idea what to expect from this point on. And so I tell, uh, I tell the film crew, you know, like, how many more shots can we get of me scuffling about? Because, like, at this point, I am speed walking. I mean, I, I, my legs are shutting down. My hip flexors no longer fire. My back is so sore. I mean, I have energy. I just literally cannot move my body in the biomechanical way that a run should be. So then I'm starting to, like, have to compensate all of this biomechanics where I'm running so weird, so inefficiently, but I just can't do anything else. And so then I tell him, like, look, you guys gotta go get dinner. This is gonna, I'm out, I'm out here till night. You know what I mean? I, I, best case scenario, I've got another three hours of running. Running! So they take off and they, they go get some dinner. And now I'm left out here by myself. I'm about mile 14 at this point. And now I'm suffering in, in silence. This is where the demons started coming in. I got no one filming me anymore. I've got no accountability, no, no Instagram story. It's just me out here by myself. And I make it one mile. And I go, I'm done. I'm quitting. This is so stupid. Uh, I cannot foresee me ever finishing this. And in that weak mental state with no accountability, I quit at mile 15. I was like, I'm done. Wildly underestimated how difficult running a marathon is. I mean, you know, you knew, dude, that this was gonna be stupid. <laughs> Everything hurts, man. Everything hurts. This bug is get out of my face. At this pace, I am four hours from being done. I want to quit so bad, dude. I want to quit so bad. 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 So then I'm going to run home. Okay. I'm running home. That's a mile to my door. And I mean, and when I say run, I mean, this is like a penguin walk. So then I get into my door. I'm at mile 16. I'm done. When the film crew comes back, I'm just going to tell them, Hey, scrap it you know let's just let's act like this never happened so then i walk in the door and my son is like oh dad you're so awesome that's so dope i can't believe you finished and my wife's like wow honey I, that's so crazy you're so you're such an inspiration i can't believe you did it my daughter comes up and hugs me and i was like ah shit and so then well now i can't be done and I can't tell them that I'm quitting. So then I just tell them, oh, I'm not done. I've got a few miles left. I'm just back here to get a protein shake. I'm just here to like refuel and then I'm gonna head back out. Telling you if my family wasn't home, I'm quitting. This video is never being made. But their support, it just, I can't let them down. I can't let them down. So then I was like, oh my goodness, okay. I guess we're doing this my mind is like playing so many tricks on me so i tell my son i'm like hey can you just hop on your bike and ride with me just ride next to me okay i ran home and i got some support i got i got a support crew i needed someone to be with me dude the dark demons in my mind right now are loud I mean, never so loud. I want to kick my son off that bike and take it and just get the miles in. I love you, dude. I love you too. I can't walk. Whoa, you almost ate it. Okay, I'm um, on the brink of dying. I think my legs are going to fall off. I think I'm going to go to bed tonight and my legs are just going to fall off. It's getting dark. At this pace. At this pace, we have two hours left. 
That makes me sick to my stomach. But my body is just thinking, how can you be efficient? How could you be more efficient? How can you move through space better and faster than you're doing now? And so I was looking at his bike. I was like, I kept thinking about rollerblades. That's what kept going on in my head is like, dude, I wish I had rollerblades. Uh, if there was any sort of decline in the road, I would run down it like into a gutter just to like have a little bit of speed for a second. It was really strange, the primal instinct to be more efficient moving through space. So then it starts getting dark. And now I can no longer be on the main road with my son because it's too dark. So we went into this abandoned school and started running the freaking parking lot of this school. One lap is 0 0.1 miles. 0 0.1. And so it is ticking by so slow. And my son's like, how many more laps do you have to do? And I'm like, 60? And he's like, what? And so then my son drops his bike and he starts running next to me. And now we're like at 20 miles, 21 miles, and he's running next to me. And I'm just like, you don't have to do this, man. It's getting cold, it's dark, and I'm barely moving. Okay. Uh, dude, this light is so bright. Can you not be so bright? So we got a, my bub's here with us. It's nine o'clock at night. My son is so amazing, dude. He's just pushing through the last bits with me. I'm destroyed, bro. I'm just my legs just don't work. It's so frustrating. It's the most frustrating thing. Because all I want to do is just get this done with, but I literally my my muscles will not work. They So we're going, we're going, and he's running next to me, he's running next to me. And now it's a mile back to my house. So all I'm thinking is just take it over to 25. And it's just 24.2, 24.3. 24.4 just forever i mean those point ones were ticking over it's like time is an illusion so now finally it ticks over to 25.0 and i can now run the one mile back to my house i tell my son hey man just get in the car it's dangerous we're on the main road it's dark it's cold my son's been running for like four miles five miles with me which is crazy for a nine-year-old and he's just like, no, man, I'm running with you. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not leaving you. But in this moment, it was like, there was this total shift and change in his personality uh, where he was just like, no, I, hands down, I'm not leaving you. Like he's usually weak. In this moment, he was so strong and his strength filled me with just this experience. Like there's no banners, there's no, finish line there's no trophy there's no medal there's no crowds there's no pictures there's no tattoo doesn't matter i don't care nothing in this day matters except for this moment side by side with my son at 10 o'clock at night finishing a freaking iron man My boy, my boy, I can't tell you how much I freaking love my kid right now. He's out here, 10 o'clock at night, getting the last mile in with me. Huh? We're so close, we're so close. It's 26 by two. It's done. It's done. Okay. Got it. Dude, this driveway is the stupidest driveway that's ever been invented. It's a little bit difficult to go up. Okay. That was the worst thing. 
Uh, was it worth it? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> well, so, I mean, we'll see how the video turns out, but this was ridiculous. I mean, this was, this was kind of, like there's perseverance and then there's stupidity. And this is a little bit of that stupidity. Completing a Iron Man is very mental. You need a lot of mental fortitude. Being fast at an Iron Man requires you to be an alien. It's just unreal. I mean, I just, I have a whole new found respect for how many people actually do this. Like when you see the people at Kona and there's thousands of people doing this. It's, that's unreal, dude. It's unreal that there's that many people that are able to push their body to this extreme. You know, and obviously I don't, I, I haven't ran in over two years and the maximum amount of running that I've done is six miles. So like, you know, if I had ran a little bit, <laughs> it would have been uh, oh, way better. The swimming, the, the, the 30 day swim that I did last year, that was like the dividends that paid off that was huge because I, I, was, I, I was swimming good. The course that I was originally gonna do was so crowded that we ended up doing this other loop. And I think it ended up having, well, uh, 2000 feet of climbing for running. And I don't know if that seems like a lot, but the climb, like it blew my hip flexors out. So trying to climb, run uphill really wrecked me. Now my overall time is I'm really disappointed in my time. I thought for sure I could do 13, 14 hours, but I just took it way too easy on the swim and way too easy on the bike. and just really had no idea how hard running is. I don't run, dude. I have weird biomechanics. I'm not efficient with running. And uh, I need to put more time into that if I was ever going to do like a solid time. But when I saw Blake Anton's time at 13.09 and I saw the videos of him, it didn't look like he was smashing. And so I'm, kind of, I'm like a little, I don't want to say ashamed, but like uh, it wasn't a fast time. But that wasn't the goal. The goal was to finish. And the overall experience is just, it's hard to put in words. Like this is, this is a crazy experience, but what I had with my son right now, like I, this, that moment overshadowed everything physically that I just did. When I think back on this off the couch Ironman, I'm going to think about me finishing in the dark with my son. That was unbelievable. But we did it. We completed it. It took me a very long time. I think the total hours, uh, it, was it was just under 16 hours, I think. I started at 6.35. I think I ended like at 9.40 or 9.50. I'm not 100% sure. It was at the tail end of 15, maybe right at the beginning of 16, I might have clicked over to 16. The marathon itself took me something like six hours and 30 minutes. The bike ride took me just, uh, just over five hours, I think. Had a lot of climbing on it though. Uh, the swim was an hour and 45 minutes and then transition and all that stuff. But I'm definitely gonna do a proper one once COVID is all done and, and, and hopefully in 2021, I'll be able to do a proper Ironman event because I didn't get to experience the vibe and the culture and the atmosphere, right? Like this was just suffering in silence and it was cool. We were able to get some good footage and, and that sort of thing. But I want, I want the whole vibe and I will do a run for 30 days and sort of get that down. So a huge thanks to Barn Pedal who spent his entire day getting these banger shots, then drove back that night 
to go do an Everest. I mean, unbelievable. If you could subscribe to Barn Pedal and check him out, give him some support because he supported me so much. A huge thanks to Drew who drove uh, the van and, and supported me. Again, a huge thanks to you for giving me this platform to be able to do such challenges and stories. A huge thanks to Whoop who has been really important in tracking my off the bike fitness uh, and being able to track when this would be, because I, I think I had a really good recovery score when I did this and that's that's by design. I mean, we didn't just luck into this. I was, I was tracking it through Whoop. I knew that this day would be really good for it. So that's huge. A huge thanks to Canyon for getting me dialed on that TT bike. Uh, it was such a speed machine. It was so fast, it was so comfortable. I really, really enjoyed uh, having access to that TT bike for this. The science and sport, obviously, for fueling me during the entire ride. Kayuku, I never know how to pronounce their name. Kayoku, Kyuku, uh, they're a, uh, uh, like a supplement, post-ride supplement. I used actually three packs during it after pretty much every effort, I ended up having like a recovery shake from them. And again, my wife for all the support that she gives me, but my son, my son, I hope that one day he'll watch this video and know how much it meant to me for him to be running next to me like that. It was the highlight of my life and I love him so much. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, Beacon Cyclist. Yeah.